What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another daily drop brought to you by Tar Hill Illustrated. Dot com and of course if you are watching our youtube channel as well that's tar hill illustrated i'm thi staff writer jacob turner joining me as he always does very own publisher andrew jones and, and aj we're here for a carolina basketball related drop in this one and we're going to be ranking carolina's six national title winning teams starting at six going down to one so interested to hear your list we haven't you know, practice this. We haven't, you know, you haven't sent me your list over via email or anything like that. So I don't necessarily know how you're going to rank these teams. And I'm interested to see where they end up quick little reminder. We are going to go pretty quickly on these. We're not trying to make this an hour long podcast. We're going to rifle through each team within like a two to three minute time span. Cause you know, trying to rank six teams, we could spend an hour and a half, you know, if we went really in depth on why and everything like that. So so you're going to have Jacob's going to have a time capsule. Like yeah, sucker runs out. Yep. Yeah, like it automatically a muscle goes over AJ and I have to stop. <laughs> I'll keep you. I'll have a timer over here. He that I'll do, you know, that's one minutes. of those things. If you have three wishes in life, I guarantee that's a, that's one of your wishes. <laughs> muscle AJ. Oh no, nah, man. Hey, well, and again, we'll keep it flowing because drops tend to be a little bit shorter. We want them to be a little bit shorter, even though we do go longer on some. So. We'll try to rifle through it. I've got a timer on my end over here. So I'm going to keep you, like you said, AJ, two minutes, maybe two and a half minutes, depending on, you know, what you're talking about in the moment. But we'll definitely keep these pretty short. All right, AJ, let's dive into it. We'll start with number six. Who's number six on your list? And let me read them out as well so people know, just to remind, 57 82, 1993, 2005, 2009, and 2017. So those are the six. And AJ, let's start with number six. 2017, the redemption yeah. team. And that's, you mentioned me, so it's the sixth best team out of school. And I actually think maybe there were some better ones that didn't win titles. And you win a national title and you get redemption. It's your second straight year in a title game. And you're number six. That's that's how good, obviously, Carolina's basketball program has been. That's how good all these title teams have been. Mm. This is a highly subjective thing. And, and I kind of think about 2017 being the sort of a modern version of what two, what 1993 was, a team with mm. a lot of guys, a team with a lot of size, uh, a team that had a lot of experience, <clears throat> guys that had been through some stuff and were continuing to get better. And um, I, I think with that club, it was really – Kennedy Meeks in the semifinals, his performance was the, the best performance of his life in the sport of basketball, and it came at a phenomenal time. I think about Isaiah Hicks having an awful game against Oregon and then turn around and playing well against Gonzaga and hitting that double pump shot off the glass from about 8 to 10 feet, yeah. which was a wonderful moment for him. Such a nice guy. I, was, I really enjoyed kind of watching him come out of the shell because he was a very shy dude and still was shy even after that game that night, but he was smiling and was talking some and, and felt good that because I think he thought he had let the team down against Oregon. You've got Joel Berry with the bad ankles and all the suction marks on his, on his lower leg and ankle high, is a high ankle sprain all throughout that tournament and just willing that team. And of course you've got Justin Jackson becoming the player that Roy was demanding and pushing since the minute he showed up, getting some rebounds, taking it in the lane, not just shooting that floater, but getting to the rim more and being a more consistent shooter from the perimeter. I thought that team was pretty solid defensively. There were a lot of different things they can do. They could handle different types of offensive looks. And, and in the end, you know, North Carolina isn't often regarded as a gritty team, but it was absolute grit that got them over the hump against Gonzaga. And quite frankly, it was grit that got them over uh, Oregon. They they played really well in high finesse ball for a while against Oregon. Then it got kind of ugly and they won ugly. So, and of course that was Luke's team that the year that Luke hit the shot against Kentucky, which is uh, still one of the great video clips out there just to see the emotion, the raw emotion of sports and those Kentucky fans. Um, they've been on the high end of that a lot. So they know what it feels like, but that was, that showed you just when you get blue blood versus blue blood, I just love the emotion and passion with that. So uh, the 2017 team was a really fun team to cover. It was a great story, but someone has to come in six on this list and it's them. Yeah. I, I agree. I, I I would probably put this team there as well. 
Um, that was about three minutes, AJ. So pretty, pretty, pretty good timing right there. Uh, good stuff on, on on that one. Not to pat yourself on the I back. I was thinking like, like that, my but... clock was telling me two fifteen. Like okay, yeah, it, 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 time later. flies a lot faster when you're actually. <laughs> yeah, it, it, I think it goes slower when you're talking. It feels like you know because we've done a lot of podcasts and we've been like, yeah, man, yeah. we just went forty five minutes on that. It only felt like twenty. Um, all right, AJ, who comes at number five on your list for this one? Nineteen ninety three. Hmm. Eric Montross, George Lynch, Derek Phelps, Donald Williams, five for seven from three against Kansas in the final four, five for seven from three against Michigan in the title game, the MOP of that final yep. four. You want to talk about length? Matt Winston was the third string center in that team and spent a year in the NBA. So that team, yeah, that was Dean. To me, I think that was the quintessential Dean Smith team mm-hmm. because it was all about connectivity. It was all about a bunch of dudes like Pat Sullivan and Henrik Rodel that did the dirty work. That team was so talented that Dante Calabria was playing two minutes a game coming off the bench on that club. And they were just really, really good. You mm-hmm. know, they they had a lot of guys that were solid NBA players. You know, Eric had a decent NBA career. George Lynch had a pretty solid NBA career. I think today a Donald Williams would play in the NBA. He didn't back then, but I think he would maybe stick around a while. Uh, he, there's, you know, some Wayne Ellington to him. He would, maybe wasn't as tall as Wayne, but he was just, he had ice in his veins. And then he hit those big free throws late. Of course, that title game is remembered by the Chris Weber stuff. Yeah. But there's two things that just get overlooked all the time when people say, ah, Dean won a title because the kid screwed up. First of all, he traveled before he called the time. Yeah. He traveled first before he started dribbling the ball to the floor. And then the reason he called the timeout was because Carolina had that perfectly defended. If you look at the placement of the Carolina players and look at where the Michigan players were, it was the, the epitome of Dean Smith defensive basketball. And the other thing is there's a picture of him calling the timeout and the people on the Michigan bench don't know in the large part that, that they were out of timeouts at all the Carolina players. You can see their reaction. They knew. So Carolina knew about Michigan's timeout situation better than Michigan did. And again, I think that that was the ultimate Dean Smith team in 1993 because people associate him with bringing in so much talent and superstars. And that's true. But that team had plenty of good players, but it was the consummate, you know, that picture of Dean Smith drawing on the board. That was Dean Smith on the board, structuring a club that cut down the nets. And to me, it was beautiful, beautiful basketball. Yeah, 93 team was a a really, really good team. And I think one that especially where we're at right now, what is it, 30 years ago, which is pretty wild to think. I think yeah, it's, it's a, wild. yeah, it's crazy. I think it's a team that um a lot of people watching this probably have a lot of reverence for because I think it fits within that demographic of of people that are as my timer goes off over here, um, of people that really, you know, that I think that's a team. So I made it. I made yeah. it underneath the Yeah, that was about two yes. and two twenty, I think. So that was really good stuff, Edja. Really good stuff on that. Let's move to number four on this list, and then we'll we'll give a shout out to our sponsor, Rogue Shop, after that. All right, number four. You know, I'm still debating. I'm actually doing this somewhat on the fly here, but mm-hmm. my debate is 05 and 57. I'm mm-hmm. going to go with 05. Okay. And, and I'll explain why 57 is higher than some people would put them. Yeah, I think 05 would beat 57 if they played the game, but that's not entirely what this is all about. So I'm going to go 05. They were so good. And I think they have the best story. Agreed. Of any Carolina basketball team ever. Mm-hmm. And we, we've talked about this in some other drops, but remember, I was covering Carolina back in those days as well. I covered the O2 team. And I told you before that the first three guys I went and talked to in the locker room in St. Louis after they won the title in 05 were Melvin Scott, Jackie Manuel, and Juwan Williams, the seniors, because I you talked to them after games their freshman year, they went eight and 20, worst team in Carolina history, tumultuous. The next year was the same when 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 Sean and Sean and Raymond came in as freshmen. It was still just a very difficult environment. They persevered. They stuck with it, and they got themselves a title. I mean, it's an incredible story. It's lessons that they can tell people for years. And quite frankly, current players can learn from those guys as well, and they should, but they probably won't. They're ancient to them now. But I love that story. I told you about the scene with standing right outside the locker room and Dean and MJ are right there and Raymond mm-hmm. Felton running down the hallway and, and hugs Michael and you were right and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I love that team. It was a team of perseverance. I think Roy Williams' best coaching move ever 
was getting Rashad McCants on the same page the last five, six weeks of that season. That's why they won the title. If he doesn't do that, I don't think they win that title. And then, of course, Melvin Scott's free throws against Villanova. Melvin Scott's a forgotten player in Carolina history, but he shouldn't be. He mm-hmm. shouldn't be because he endured. He shouldn't be because he loved the front of the jersey so much. He stayed put and made it work. And then he hit those free throws. And without that, maybe they don't even advance to the Elite Eight that year. So really, really good team. Gutsy team. Raymond Felton, engine, motor type team. McCants with his beautiful shot. Uh, Marvin Williams coming off the bench, the best six man Carolina's had perhaps ever. And uh, so they won a title and it was a really cool thing to see. Yeah. Loudest moment in the Smith center ever. I think a lot of people would agree with happened that yeah. year as well with, with, you know, yeah. the Marvin Williams put back as well. So yeah, that's a year that stands out for me as well. Cause I was about 10, 11 years old. I told you the documentary that Carolina put out about that team is one of my favorites. One of my favorite Roy quotes of all time. It's amazing what can be accomplished when no one cares or gets the credit. I think it's just a a quote that epitomizes that team and the individuals on it and, you know, getting others to buy in who maybe didn't want to buy in as easily as some, but the fact that Roy was able to get everybody on the same page and get Carolina back to where the program belonged, you know, historically. And then, you know, after that, just really never looked back with Roy having just a fantastic second, you know, fantastic stint at Carolina, but doing that, I think after a year, is yeah. really big accomplishment, man, for what that program was at. It's it's just really. Yeah, I, didn't, I didn't hear the ding yet. I didn't hear the ding. Did I make? No, 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 I actually don't have it. That was about two and a half minutes again. So good stuff, Edge. I, I, I want to hear the ding because I want to yeah. stop and then hear the ding so I can feel triumphant here. The right? ding. You've got two I need left on this. I, I really so. need. I really need to pad my my uh, my confidence. We're working my, on it, really man. Build it's, my ego. I need. I need more of an ego, right? Yeah, man. You you've been good so far. You, yeah, right. You've been, you've been good so far, keeping in that time limit, man. I, I've, I've been impressed, to be honest with you. I think the longest yeah. one was the number six one, and that was just kind of you getting warmed day. up a little bit. Yeah, man. Getting warmed up, exactly. I, yeah. I, I clanked a couple of lamps in the lamp line to go yeah. back and do it. You're loosened up now. You're you're within that two and a half minute time span pretty easily. AJ, real quickly, want to give a shout out to our sponsor on this podcast, and that's Rogue Shop. Check them out, rogueshop.com, CBD, Delta 8, Delta 9, tinctures, oils, gummies, creams, flour, whatever you got, they have it. It's top shelf, family grown hemp products. Everything you need is at rogueshop.com check them out make sure you use that promo code tar heels 10 to save links in the description below big shout out to rogue shop and a big thank you to them for continuing to be a sponsor because we've been rocking with them Absolutely. for a while now aj so yeah long long may that relationship continue because they really do have some f- fantastic products all right aj who's number three on your list of carolina's ncaa title winning teams i'm gonna go 1957 and as i was saying a minute ago if that club lined up and played the other ones, they would probably lose because college basketball is different now than it was then. But in in their defense, they did beat Wilt Chamberlain and Kansas. Yeah, that's pretty big. Game, triple overtime. And, and I think if there's anybody you can make an argument that's the greatest player of all time, his name isn't Michael Jordan, it would be Wilt Chamberlain. Yeah. And he was incredible back then. He was a national, I guess he was in some people's national player of the year at Kansas. If you ever get a chance to go to Fog Allen Fieldhouse, by the way, there's a museum there, and they have Wilt Chamberlain's letter jacket in a glass casing, and it gave – I'm getting them now. Yeah. Oh, it gave, it gave me goosebumps. And and going there, by the way, there's also a lot of Roy stuff. They really respect Roy a lot. So if you ever have a chance to go there, go check it out. But, man, Wilt Chamberlain was the absolute end-all, be-all. And they beat him. Yeah. And they beat him with Lenny Rosenbluth at foul trouble. Mm-hmm. So – Give that club its due. They're one of only two NCAA Division I teams to go 32-0 and and win a national championship. The other one's 1976 Indiana, which was probably the consummate Bobby Knight team. And they get that. You can't take it away from them. From them. So they get in the number three spot. Rosenbluth was legendary. Tommy Kearns jump at center. I mean, you could go on and on and on about that club. They won their... Uh, national semifinal game of the final four the day before over Michigan State, also in triple overtime. So imagine today winning your final four game in triple overtime, winning your national championship game in triple overtime over a fabled program uh, with, at that time, the greatest player of all time. Mm-hmm. So that is really dramatic stuff. All these titles are, are very, have very dramatic storylines. And I think that that club deserves it to do. They're a 32 and 0, man. That's, yes. That's impressive. And 100%. They won it all. So, so, so they deserve the three spot. 
AJ, that's right on time. That's one second left on the clock, man. That's fantastic stuff. That's like a last I'm, second. That's it. That's it. AJ channeling his inner Luke May. Yeah. Yeah. Just hitting the game winner right there. AJ. I mean, there's literally one second left on that clock. That that's, that's really, that, yeah, that's great. That that's, that, that was, that's fantastic. I, I didn't my know if you had that in out. you to be honest. I get my elbow in more. <laughs> you got to tuck that elbow, man. But no, I agree. I think recency bias plays a factor especially with it being that long ago. But I think recency bias plays a factor in sports a lot. I think it's so prominent because people just fixate on the now and because that's really all you can remember. You remember the now because you're living in it. And you remember what happened a year ago or two years ago because you, because it was two years ago and you don't, you don't remember as much what happened 20, you know, in this case, what 70, 80 years ago, people yeah. weren't alive or don't remember it only seen black and white footage. And of course the game's changed, but when you focus on, you take away the, the 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 bias that comes with the time period and just say, okay, for a team to do what they did during that year of 1957 to go undefeated, to beat Wilt Chamberlain in the national title game, to be as good as they were, they were as good as it gets. And it's a reason that yeah. they're, you know, one of a few teams that have ever gone, I think you said one of two teams that have ever gone 32 yeah. and 0 and won a national title. That doesn't matter when it happened. It's still impressive and you have to rank yeah. it accordingly. You know what I mean? Yeah. And by the way, the reversal of that, I think baseball is the one sport where people sort of, sort of have a bias to the guys from a long time ago. Yeah, that is true. I've noticed and, you that. Know, when yeah. we, we get that discussion with Shohei Otani and Babe Ruth a lot right now, which, you know, I'm going to be that guy and say, no, Babe's the greatest American sports team yeah. sports athlete of all time because pitching, hitting, all that kind of stuff. So, but it's interesting that in baseball, it's kind of the opposite. But you're right. Basketball, especially, it's more lately stuff than any other sport. I think yeah. maybe because the way the game's evolved is a big part of that as well. 100%. Yeah, if you put the 57 team up against the 2009 team, I mean, I think the 2009 team probably beats them by 50. If you're if you're talking a team. They beat from, everybody by, 10, yeah, by double If you take a team stuff. from 57 and put it up a t- team from 2009, I mean, Evol- I mean, biology's changed in human beings, too. It's just a different time period. You can't really compare the two like That's that. That's a hell of a segue, by the way. Yeah, 100%, because what is number two on your list? Because I think a, I think some pe- I think the, the next two, based on who's left, I don't know who you're going to put it to, but I think there is going to be some discussion and debate around the two teams that are left, because for me, I, I think I know who my number one is, but again, recency bias probably plays a factor, because I wasn't born in 1982. I wasn't around at the time, but I know how good that roster is and how good that team is. But I also know from witnessing the 09 team, how good and dominant they were. So I think this one's going to cause some debate. So who's number two? Well, yeah, it's 2009. Mm -hmm. And it's again, I made these choices here on the fly right before we, you it's like a know. coin toss between these two. Yeah, it's like it whatever is. You're feeling, you and, know. And, and if you want to argue the absolute numbers, that the 82 club won, it, they got a buy in the first round because there were 64 teams in the tournament then. So they only played one game to get to the Sweet 16, and they beat James Madison by two points. Mm-hmm. And then they won the national championship game by one point, and there was – so they, they needed Georgetown to make a huge mistake. Freddie Brown with the pass. And remember, Patrick Ewing had like four or five goaltends in that game. So Georgetown hurt itself and Carolina won. But that Carolina team is so damn good. Yeah. And you have to look at the whole of the picture as well. The 09 team steamrolled through the tournament. But, and I think that the 09 team could beat the 82 team if they played. If we're going to do that, if we're going to play that yeah. game, we we remember the '82 team playing the style back then. There was no three point shot. Mm-hmm. All right, um, there was there was no shot clock. They they didn't have a great bench, but they had Perkins, Burley, and Jordan. Yeah, nine. Man. The trifecta had a pretty good bench. They had guys like Ed Davis and Tyler Zeller getting a handful of minutes a game playing the NBA. And Davis still in the NBA. Mm-hmm. You know, there, there, so there was so much talent at 09 team and Roy rode the first seven or so real hard because they were just so good. I mean, that team could score in a flash like no Carolina team I've ever covered. They are the best Carolina team I've covered, obviously. And I would put them up there with 01 Duke as the two as what as the best team I've covered in general. Mm-hmm. I, I would probably give them an edge over that Duke team. So I think they were tougher, which again, you know, to win titles, you got to be tough. And Carolina wasn't always considered that, but but the Tyler Hansborough effect just kind of rubbed off on so many other guys and Lawson became tough and Deion Thompson got tough and, and Danny Green had, had some wiring in him that pull him in a back alley. Danny's the first one walking out. Yeah. 
you know what I mean? Yeah. So plus the threes, the defense and everything else. So 09 was, a, it was, I think you could argue was the last great college basketball team. Mm-hmm. 2012 Kentucky was close. I think 15 Kentucky would have been, but they didn't complete the deal. You got to complete the deal in order to get that. So 09 was awesome. It was a, probably the funnest team to cover. Characters, personality, the epitome of confidence of a basketball team and a club that just knew how to kick it into another gear and wipe the floor with anybody when they did that. So 09 is number two. Yeah, I, and I could see why. And again, I think there'll be some debate between number one and number two, maybe a little bit more than there will be between three and six. Cause I do, again, I think recency play bias plays a factor, obviously Roy's best team as well. So a lot of people are going to take that and run with it. But again, you're going to talk about the 82 here at number one, kind of hard to argue against them too. When you just consider who was on that roster, I know it's maybe a little bit different because the guys were really good at Carolina under Jordan was a freshman at the time, but I think they're a little bit more revered now because of their NBA careers, which you obviously have to kind of separate too, because they weren't in the NBA at that time. Nobody knew in 1982 that Jordan was going to go down as the greatest basketball player of all time. Nobody knew that. They knew it was really good. They didn't know that. So I think that does play a little bit of a factor too, but it's hard to, you can't, again, I think you could flip a coin on these two and whatever one it lands on, you could make a solid argument for being at number one. I think a lot of people would agree with that. Well, if you just if you look at the NBA side of things, you have two guys that were in the NBA all time fifty, yeah. worthy, Jordan, and then Perkins played what eighteen years in the league. He's crazy a, man. Three, He's really, he good. was a three time first team All American. Mm-hmm. Th- those that trio right there, no one else has that trio. Mm-hmm. Not not certainly in Carolina history. Very few, maybe some UCLA teams were close to having a trio like that. Um, you know, I don't even think the great Duke 01 team, because unfortunately Jason Williams had the incident with the accident and everything that, that hurt his career. But still, those guys were better. They were great college players, but they were better at the next level. That Carolina team was awesome. Yeah. And they played in a different era. Imagine them playing in 2019 era, the style, a little bit more open game. Jordan in an open court setting. He was the third option. Now, he was the option for that, that shot to win it. Because Dean felt the game so well, right? Like Dean would have given the ball to Jimmy Chitwood without hesitation in Hoosiers because he knew he was a guy. He didn't have to have a kid say, I can make it. I'm going to make it. That kind of thing. He just felt it so well. But they had the coach on the floor, Jimmy Black. Matt Dory, arguably the best role player ever at North Carolina. Yeah. Perfect out there on the floor. That was also a redemption team. They lost the title game the year before. Mm -hmm. And you had... Worthy back, and you had Joe, uh, Perkins back, you had Black, you had Doherty. All those guys were back. Jordan was the new piece, and that put them over the hump, and they beat a damn good Georgetown team in the finals. Yeah. Damn good. So I think if 82 played in 09, the way the game had changed with more of the usage of the court, the perimeter aspect, aspect of things, I think they would have even been better. I really think they would fit in great. Because Perkins showed the next year – the ACC had a 17 foot nine inch three point line. They experimented with an ACC play. Perkins was hitting threes. Mm-hmm. Perkins could, and he, look at him in the NBA, he hit threes. So imagine if you pull him out and you give Worthy even more room to operate on the block one on one with that with that unbelievable hip he had, getting people on his hip and scoring, and the way he used the rim so well. And that team would have been just as dominant in 09 as they were in 82 and just as dominant as the 09 team was or maybe better. They lost two games in 82 and one of them was when Perkins didn't even play and the other one was to UVA who was number one in the country at the time. They were both like yeah. one, two basically. Mm-hmm. So they were, they were awesome. Yeah. 82. And again, I, 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 I do a hundred percent see where you're coming from on that. I just, because of recency bias. And again, I wasn't thinking to witness it with my own two eyes. I would put 09 above 82, but it's, also not as cut and dry as I think some people might think it is. Cause like you mentioned, you look at the personnel, you look at the, how the games change, you look at the team that they beat. And I always forget it's a redemption team too. That always kind of go. I think even a lot of Carolina fans forget about that. The fact that that was a redemption team as well, kind of losing the national championship game and winning the next I year. Think was. Doing it. Yeah. 
I yeah. think O nine was too. In a lot of ways, of because earlier, of how bad they lost to Kansas. Yeah, yeah. And, and then Roy slaps on the sticker two nights later. It was a mess, yeah. and fans did not appreciate that at all. And that club came back and took care of it. The hit, there's history in the school, this it's crazy. program of doing that. Now, 82 did it. 93 won a title after Duke won back to back titles. 05 wins. That's a redemption from the chaos that preceded them or that preceded uh, Roy Williams. 09 gets redemption on 08. 17 gets redemption on 16. And they kind of fell off on the redemption circle, it's a redemption cycle here this past year. But who knows? Maybe next year's team gets redemption on the disaster of this past season. You never know. <laughs> I mean, it wouldn't surprise me when you look at the theme of Carolina. It, it would fit the script. It would fit the script, right? Wouldn't it ever? Yeah, I mean, it really would. I don't think anybody would be surprised. It might be teeing up for something like that. I know Carolina fans are praying it's teeing up for a redemption tour, um, but we'll see what the heck happens. But guys, want to hear from y'all on this ranking these Carolina six NCAA title teams from from six to one. Want to hear from you guys? Get involved on Twitter at Hill Illustrated, Facebook at Tar Hill Illustrated, and just come over to our website. You can sign up to be a premium member for just eight thirty three a month and get involved in our premium message boards where we post every single content item we put out, and people can get involved on the thread. And we do hear from a lot of our subscribers on that as well. So get in touch however you want to, but we want to hear your ranking. I think it'd be pretty cool if people reached out to us on Twitter when this comes out. AJ, just one one through six, just list it. But you, but you got to listen to ours. Yeah, and and so you can do. It. Some people just they blow it off, don't listen, and they just start commenting. I'm like, you got to listen in order. Yeah, you got to hear ours. We want to hear if you agree and disagree, and then you can put your ranking down. I'll be interested to see what people have to say. So looking forward. And, to and maybe you could change our opinion. Maybe we could yeah, switch them around. Exactly. I think some of these are. I mean, all of them are up for debate in a lot of ways. It's, again, it's just our opinion, just AJ's Absolutely. opinion on this. So we, we want to hear what you guys have. Yeah. To say, I've been Jacob Turner. He's been Andrew Jones. Another daily drop. Appreciate y'all watching as always. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell as well, and check out rogueshop.com. Use that promo code TARHEELS10 to save on your next order. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks.